I'm Tom Long, and for Ascension of Our Lord Sunday, the epistle reading is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. If you'd like, take a moment and read that. Just pause the video and then come back and we'll go for a walk. Sometimes we're so full of joy, we feel like we're going to burst. <laughs> in this week's epistle reading, Paul seems to have found himself in that situation. In his language, the word for faith and faithfulness is the same word. So when he says, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, I think he's referring to the Ephesians' uh, continued faithfulness. He was there when they first believed and their faith was sealed with the gift of the Spirit. He talks about that in verses 13 and 14. So uh, I think in verse uh, 15 of chapter 1, he is talking about how their continued faithfulness is blessing him, Paul. The other trait that has so moved him is their, quote, love for all God's people, unquote a practical expression of both their faith and their faithfulness. A pastor with a church that is living out their faith is like a parent whose children makes them proud. Her cup overflows. Paul says he can't stop giving thanks for them or praying for them. And, and what is his prayer for a faithful, loving congregation? That God will give them the spirit of, quote, wisdom and revelation, unquote that their hearts would be, quote, enlightened, unquote, to have an experiential knowledge of God, of our hope and of God's power. Every believer is sealed with the Holy Spirit into God's family, but as the Spirit fills our hearts with faithfulness and love, the Spirit also brings us deeper into the experience of fellowship with God. The Spirit opens our eyes to the reality of the future to which we look forward with hope. The Spirit changes how we look at power. The world saw the power of the Roman Empire and its Jewish collaborator leaders as it squashed the hope of the Jewish people by crucifying the Messiah. The Spirit helps us to see that in raising Christ from the dead, God's power is greater than and victorious over every earthly power as well as the powers of darkness. But this isn't just about how Paul has been blessed by the Ephesian church or his fervent prayers that they have an increasing greater experience of knowing God. It is also about God's inheritance. Verse 18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. And then he describes who you are, who the Ephesian believers are. He says, the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Holy people, obedient believers, are, Paul says, the riches of God's inheritance. We are precious to God. God counts us as, quote, the riches of his glorious inheritance, unquote. The world saw Jesus as a loser who died like a criminal but the risen, ascended Christ is a demonstration of the unsurpassed power and glory of God. From the perspective of eternity, it doesn't matter how the world sees me or sees you. In God's eyes, we are riches. We are precious. My prayer for us is that the spirit of revelation will help us to see that God is with us and treasures us, and that this present age will one day fade away as our eternal hope is realized in glory.